What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Ryan. I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and commercial pilot. Today, we're going to be breaking down the F-15E, the F-15 Echo. Pretty sure that stands for entertaining, excellent, energetic, everyone loves it. it stands for something like that. <laughs> we're going to break down the trailer from DCS. This bad boy is going to release here soon. Overall, I'll just tell you what I'm seeing in the trailer, and ultimately, if I think there's some real things, some things that maybe could be improved on, but then, if you haven't noticed, uh, you know, it's not that I like to brag about being a uh, F-15E fighter pilot. <sighs> just, I sleep with this under my pillow every night. It just makes me feel all warm and cozy inside. <laughs> but I'll be flying that bad boy on DCS as well. Uh, just giving you my background thoughts on what I think of it. Ultimately, I just want you guys to enjoy this video and uh, maybe tell a friend to come check out some Max Afterburner. And the best compliment that you could do would be just watch another video after this one ends or dominate that like button. That'd be nice as well. Let's dive in. Here we go. All right, cool. Bomb falling off there. Uh, looked like maybe a GBU-24 or something like that, which is a 2,000 pound bomb. With something like that, what I'm gonna do as soon as I release it, and the way that you, the way that it works is your Wizzo is gonna say captured, cleared to release with a laser guided weapon like that. As soon as that thing comes off the jet, you're gonna feel it. Kukunk. You're gonna feel that come off the jet, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna immediately whip the jet, I'm gonna whip it and look down and make sure that it's a good bomb, and I'm gonna call out good bomb. Because maybe something malfunctioned with it, a fin didn't deploy or something like that, and if you don't see it guiding well as a bomb guides, it kinda of just looks like it's on a trajectory that is similar to the flight path that the jet was on, obviously just getting smaller and smaller away from you, but maybe something happens where a fin doesn't deploy and it goes sideways, and if things go sideways, that's never a good thing. So I would call that out because I know that we're gonna to need to re-attack. So I wouldn't want the, the weapon systems officer to lose his designation or her designation so that they'd have to go through all that work all over again. So it's just tip, tip of the hat to the uh, Wizzos we'd like to say is just checking the bomb there. That was a tight merge. That was a real tight merge. That's what we would call dusting them off. That might have even been a training rule violation if you were in training. Obviously, this is a digital simulator, so they're simulating combat, hopefully. Sounds like more fun to me. Uh, so something that close, I think, would be done in combat. You would want to do that. I want to do that in combat so that the person I'm doing it to is like, whoa, like what just happened? Maybe even squeeze off a couple rounds as you're going in there of the 20 mic mic, the 20 millimeter high explosive incendiary rounds. Who knows? Maybe get lucky and you smack that jet, you know, as it's pointed right at you, very low probability. However, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make that adversary pilot flinch uh, and think, oh, what am I doing up here? Why am I doing this? Why am I fighting against an F-15E that everybody loves? Why am I doing this? What are my life decisions that have led me here? Do I blame my parents? Do I blame my guidance counselor? I want that person thinking about the last meal they had, whether that was a mistake, maybe they shouldn't have done that, maybe it's making them feel queasy. <laughs> I want them in their heads. I want them constantly spinning and thinking they're making a mistake because as soon as you do that, as soon as you allow that thief in the night to sneak in and make you think you're making a mistake, good night. It's over because then you're going to make a BFM mistake, a basic fighter maneuver mistake, whereas you're going to bleed off the energy off the jet. You're going to make a maneuver that is going to be easy to follow. You're going to select the wrong weapon at the wrong time. And then I'm just going to be in that person's head rent free, just living there, just hanging out, oceanfront property, kicking my feet up, just being like, hey, bro, thanks for the free rent. <laughs> All right, those weapons coming off of that F-15E that low, I would prefer to see some parachutes on those bad boys to slow them down so that I have the chance to get away from the frag. And the frag creates this essentially bubble that expands very rapidly, much more rapidly than a fighter jet could fly. Supersonic is my assumption, but that's gonna be a shock wave that's gonna throw out shrapnel towards your aircraft. So the last thing you wanna do is shoot yourself down. If you shoot yourself down, your friends are never gonna let you forget it. So drag shoots would slow those bombs down and allow them to hit further behind you so you can do what's called a straight through safe escape maneuver and just get away from that frag and not be made fun of by your friends. Both equally important. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. See, checking, seeing the bombs hit. I mean, I feel like bombs hitting like that and seeing them happen right, they hit right underneath you, like a wingman would have needed to have dropped those, or maybe they're small diameter bombs. Those small diameter bombs fly out and have long flight times and they can come in and hit. 
but probably wouldn't be able to see it hit the ground right underneath you, but uh, definitely looks cool. Ah, and then we got the F-15E flying right through the frag. So it's because they're so close to this enemy fighter that they're fighting with and the shrapnel off of that jet, you know, everything blown up off of that jet from the gun, the Fox 2 that's coming off the rail. It's gonna go right down your intakes. It's gonna be a bad day. Uh, so maybe have a little more distance behind that and then keep BFMing. So you see the fireball blow up in front of you, fight's not over. You gotta keep fighting to the very end and that includes getting away from that explosion. And, oh, by the way, Boom, big explosion happens in the sky. It's like a dinner bell when someone shoots an elk. Like every bear within, you know, five miles or more, every you know, wolf is gonna be tracking to that dinner bell. So you wanna get away from those big explosions. It's the same thing like nature. Get away, you know, get your elk out of there as fast as you can so that you're not gonna be susceptible to having other predators come and try to get you. In this case, have another aircraft try to come shoot you down. Ooh, flying close to trail like that, just near and dear to my heart, makes me feel all warm inside. I love it. And the Strike Eagle to me, it's just a beautiful aircraft. They got a nice load out there. They've got four AMRAMs on the belly of that thing. Uh, looks like maybe a couple more on the sides by the uh, tanks. And just seeing a load out like that makes me think it's gonna be a fun day. We're gonna be raging around doing some defensive counter air or offensive counter air. And we're having a little fun making our way into the airspace right now. So. Anytime you can have a little bit of fun, you guys know me. Secret to success in fighter aviation. Sound cool on the radio. Doing victory aileron roll whenever you can. Got some Lake and Heath jets, some England jets there, so shout out to England. And just seeing that, that AIM-9, I think that's what came off the jet a second ago, seeing it just kind of come off and then like accelerate as it goes up. Whew. That just, if that doesn't make you warm and tingly inside, I can't help you. That's a lot of bombs coming off the jet there. So if you had like a whole bunch of pre-planned targets or something like that, yeah, potentially that many, but that is a lot. Oh, and then right here you can see the scrapes from the aerial refueling going in the door there is scraped up. Just kind of cool to see, you know, that it's like a realistic detail, you know, that I can see uh, as that thing slides back in, I'm guessing it's kind of scraping against something, but uh, it just, just kind of neat seeing that uh, detail there. And I think it's cool whenever you can add in that much detail to a simulator. So I want to do tip of the hat to the creators of this. Well done. Folks on this details just Every little bit makes it a better experience, so nice job. Seeing the wing break off of an aircraft in front of you, although I've not seen that myself, but you know I've seen dogfight footage before. When you see that happen, it's just like this feeling of like, all right, this is who's next. Like the fangs go through the floor is what we call it when you have an experience like that, I'm assuming. And then like some just close up of the low level flying environment, super sick. Just an amazing jet to fly low level up. That was my favorite thing to do in this aircraft, to be honest with you. And having a weapon systems operator was one of my favorite things as well, because you got someone back there dealing with a lot of the beeps and squeaks. They're experts on all the different radar systems, the pod, and they're able to kind of get inside what we call the soda straw and just really hone in on what's going on in the air to ground environment. I'm up there running the air to air radar, just making things happen. And especially flying around, you know, 20,000 plus foot mountains sometimes, being able to have someone in the back taking care of the radar or doing some other type of like work that you need to get down into the weeds of the instruments. It's nice to be able to just look outside. Sometimes I even thought of myself as a taxi driver for the weapon systems officer, and that's okay to me sometimes, you know, but then when the dogfight comes, you know, you're like, all right, I got this. And as long as they're, they're back there, you'll know it's a good whizzo if they're just super excited for you when you simulatedly shoot someone down. Uh, I also did an intercept, a uh, real world intercept in combat on some unidentified aircraft and having my Wizzo in the back who was just constantly tracking it. I can't talk too much about it, but essentially they were able to lock onto it and be able, they were able to help keep that connected to our aircraft as I'm focused on looking outside at mountains and things like that. Just an incredible experience. Luckily for whatever we were tracking, they turned around at the right time and we didn't have to, uh, to uh, throw an AMRAM at him, but it was close. So 
incredible experience just flying the F-15E, just one of the best jets out there. I, I think any jet that has the systems that this thing has is a powerhouse. So uh, tip of the hat to the DCS F-15E creators. It's gonna be super fun to fly, so stay tuned. Go ahead and check out one of these other videos that's gonna pop up, probably a reaction video. But if you just stay on the channel and watch more videos, it just helps the channel grow, and it would just mean a lot to me. And stay tuned for a DCS F-15E actual video when I jump on this little guy. Did I mention I was a Strike Eagle pilot? When I jump on there and fly that F-15E and DCS, it's gonna be super fun. Most of all, guys, thanks so much for being here. It really means a lot. Thanks for helping me grow this channel. Hope you have a great day. We'll catch you in the next video.